Have you ever had a memory that you remember so vividly, but then later realized that you were incorrect? Well, what if you shared that same false memory with hundreds or even thousands of others? Others who remember it the same way you do. For example, the logo for the popular cartoon series, Looney Tunes, is remembered by many as being spelled like this, when it's actually spelled like this. Or our beloved Pokemon Pikachu, that thousands of people remember as having a black tip at the end of his tail, when he never really has. Or maybe even the mascot behind one of the largest board games, Monopoly. While many people remember the Monopoly man as having a monocle, he never actually had one. These are all examples of the Mandela Effect, a strange phenomenon where a substantial number of people share a false memory. Memories that seem to go against any historical evidence or records. It's something that doesn't even seem to make sense, but something we're finding more and more examples of. Some of them can be explained simply, like two similar logos being remembered as the same, but other cases seem to not have any reasonable explanation at all. So how could so many people be remembering the same thing incorrectly? It's a question that everyone from psychologists to scientists and even conspiracy theorists have tried to answer but none of their theories quite give a full story. Today, we'll be taking a look at some of the most interesting cases of the Mandela Effect and attempt to find some sort of explanation for them and of course, the phenomenon as a whole. To give a little background, the phenomenon itself got its name from former South African leader, Nelson Mandela, who happened to be the subject of the first case. It all began when Fiona Broom, a paranormal researcher, discovered that many other people attending a conference she was at in 2010 shared her memory that Nelson Mandela died in prison in the 1980s, when in fact, Nelson Mandela was very much alive at the time of the conference and lived until 2013. Like Broom, many others shared the same false memory and even remembered seeing news coverage about Mandela's death. But the memories of false events didn't end there shortly after, many realized there were many more cases. The phenomenon expanded rapidly through subreddits and articles, with subjects ranging from film quotes to the spelling of popular books. Soon enough, there were hundreds of examples of the strange effect and thousands who chimed in, claiming to have the same memories and more importantly, wondering how they all did. Numerous theories have come out over the years trying to answer this question ranging from alternate realities and parallel universes to collective false memories. But we'll get into those a bit later, as we first need to take a closer look at some examples. You see, many of even the most popular Mandela Effect cases can actually be explained pretty simply. For example, the famous Mandela Effect revolving around the magic mirror scene in Disney's Snow White film. While a significant number of people recall the line as mirror mirror on the wall, who is the fairest of them all? The actual quote in the movie is magic mirror on the wall, who is the fairest of them all? While at first this might seem like a genuine mystery, as so many people remember the line incorrectly, there's a reason behind it. You see, the original Snow White fairy tale actually did use the line mirror mirror, and the mix-up was likely from people remembering that. Or another case around the spelling of the Berenstein Bears book series where many people remember the ending of Berenstein being spelled S-T-E-I-N instead of how it's actually spelled S-T-A-I-N. This is most likely due to the fact that the S-T-E-I-N suffix is much more popular in English language, causing some to confuse the two. This is sadly the case for much of the Mandela Effect catalog, with varying reasons and explanations behind them, but not all of them. The Fruit of the Loom logo has long stood out as not only one of the most prevalent Mandela effects, but also one that lacks any reasonable explanation. You see, this logo isn't the actual logo for Fruit of the Loom. The cornucopia in the back isn't in the actual logo, and it never was. Regardless of that though, there are thousands upon thousands of posts, videos, and threads discussing the missing cornucopia. For many, it's the most iconic feature of the logo itself, so how could it never have existed to begin with? The company itself has repeatedly denied their logo ever having the cornucopia and taking a look back at their logo's history through official documents, this seems to be the case. But this has done little to deter the investigation into the missing part of the logo. From individuals finding clothing with the elusive cornucopia on it to digging up old newspaper articles referring to it. 
For example, in a 1998 Forbes article, Fur the Loom is referenced for having their well-known cornucopia logo on their websites of their distributors, despite their logo appearing right above the article without the cornucopia. Or, in a 1994 Florida newspaper, is referenced during an interview with an actor from the old Fruit of the Loom commercials. Or another reference in a 1994 Pennsylvania newspaper, which used the headline, A Cornucopia of Job Cuts, while discussing Fruit of the Loom slashing 3,200 of their employees' jobs. And even stranger, the company itself filed for a now-canceled logo trademark in 1974 that includes the cornucopia in the design codes even though it doesn't appear in the logo itself. This is clearly something that has been stumping the masses for decades. So, is there any other explanation behind it? While many have tried attributing the confusion to the fact cornucopias are often portrayed with fruits or the color of the leaves once being brown like a cornucopia, none can really prove their reason. This isn't the only case without a clear cause behind it too. Many others also remain a complete mystery. So if the answer isn't always a clear mix-up, what could be causing this strange phenomenon overall? Ever since the Mandela Effect gained popularity back in 2010, there has been theories trying to explain it. By now, there's hundreds of them, ranging from the dull and plausible to the ludicrous and unlikely. So for the sake of time, let's take a look at some of the more popular and compelling among them. By far, the most popular theory, and one that Fiona Broom herself believes, is the parallel universe theory. As the name implies, the theory suggests that the Mandela Effect occurs when our universe interacts with an alternate one, essentially saying that these false memories we have aren't actually false, but real memories from another universe that somehow got mixed up with ours. For example, the memories many have of the Monopoly man wearing a monocle come from a universe where he actually does have one. While this theory does seem far-fetched, there is at least some mathematical support for infinite universes, with some physicists believing in string theory. Even with that though, while mathematical models do support string theory, and there's no current way to disprove the existence of other universes, there's also no way to confirm them. Moreover, even if they do exist, the notion that they might interact in subtle ways as suggested by the Mandela Effect lacks scientific grounding. Ultimately, while this theory captivates our imagination about parallel universes, it doesn't seem like the most possible explanation. A more realistic, but still popular theory is that the Mandela Effect is simply a case of false memories. Although our memories are often described as libraries filled with books of our past that we can look through, the reality is actually quite different. As neuropsychologist Dr. Bonner Jackson explains, our memories are not a carbon copy of reality. Memory is influenced by different biases, perceptions, preconceptions, and expectations. What this means is that there are several factors that go into making up our memories, and that even if two people were to witness the same event, their memories of it could be very different. Moreover, even if the two ended up with the same memories from the event, they could change over time. It's actually even possible for humans to create a completely false memory of an event that never happened through leading questions or misinformation. One of my favorite studies, and one that I think illustrates this idea really well, is the Lost in the Mall experiment. In 1995, psychologist and professor Elizabeth Loftus conducted a study where participants were given four stories from their childhood provided by their parents or relatives, and were asked to talk about them. However, there was a twist. While three stories were true events from their childhood, the fourth was a completely made-up story. Strangely enough though, when asked to later recall the memories, 25% of them said that they remembered the fabricated one, with some even filling in missing details of the story. You see, Loftus used leading questions and misinformation with the other stories to plant the memory of an event that never happened. In fact, the technique was so convincing that even after the subjects were told one of the memories were fake and asked which one it was, 21% chose one of the real stories. This isn't the only study like this either, with other researchers successfully planting false memories in 20 to 70% of subjects. Overall, the study and ones like it show just how malleable and faulty our memories can be. When you apply this type of thinking back to the Mandela effect, it's clear to see how one could possibly be mixing up memories or even combining them. For example, Curious George has become a famous Mandela effect 
due to many people remembering him distinctly for having a tail when he never has. Some even say they have a specific memory of him hanging from his tail. But what if he's just being confused with a different animated monkey? Abu from Aladdin and Diddy Kong, the Nintendo character, are both also comical monkeys that happen to hang from their tails in source material. And there are plenty of other animated monkeys as well. It seems likely that the confusion behind Curious George comes from these memories of different characters clashing together when being recalled. There is one more study I'd like to showcase though, and I think it highlights some really interesting things about the Mandela Effect and our memory. While attempting to test the validity of the Mandela Effect, a team of psychologists from the University of Chicago performed an experiment where they showed 100 participants a real logo along with two tweaked versions of the logo. They then asked them to choose which was the correct version. Some of the images were well-known Mandela effects, so one of the tweaked versions were made to represent that. For example, Pikachu had the real version, a slightly tweaked one, and the version with a black tip on his tail as he's often remembered as having. Out of these examples with the Mandela effect inspirations, participants only guessed the correct answer 33% or less of the time, even when they were fully confident in their answer. In addition, the image they thought was the correct one was almost always the Mandela Effect version. Even stranger, in another part of the test where participants were shown the correct image and studied it, they would still often proceed to guess the incorrect answer. Overall, the study revealed a few things. First, that the Mandela Effect, or at least visual Mandela Effects, are a real phenomenon. But more importantly, the researchers found that almost all of the participants hadn't seen the incorrect version of the logos before, meaning that despite their memories of the logos being only the correct version, they still chose the incorrect one. What this means is that something about these Mandela Effect images, just more so, look like the correct versions. The researchers themselves echoed a similar message, stating they couldn't find a universal cause for the incorrect answers. Instead, theorizing the confusion is likely based on our shared environment. And I think this is a really big part of the phenomenon overall. It seems completely possible that many of the Mandela Effect cases are simply due to mixing up common associations. As one last example, let's take another look at Curious George. Everyone seems to remember him as having a tail when he never has. But when you take a look at his design, it does look unnatural for him to not have one probably because monkeys in real life and every other animated monkey has one. We remember Curious George as having a tail because in our shared environment, monkeys have them. In conclusion, it seems like the Mandela Effect doesn't have just one answer. Sometimes it's because the quote was said a different way originally, sometimes it's due to mixing up similar images, and sometimes we just can't tell. Maybe that's why it's become such a persistent mystery. If every case is unique with a different cause behind it, then there isn't just one answer. There's hundreds, and a new one for each individual case. This almost seems to be a never-ending cycle, a new Mandela effect and a new answer for each one. So whether an individual Mandela effect is due to the malleability of our memories, the influence of our shared environment, or perhaps even alternate realities, the Mandela effect as a whole continues to raise more questions than answers. Thanks for watching.